Okay, guys, we're back on the TPI. This is my stock base that I did work on years ago. But I had an idea. I mean, the, the owner of this project, Rob Wants, and I agree, we're going we're gonna to try to keep our air speeds through the runners and the base as close as possible as we can to the intake port, which means it's going to need a small intake port, which is why we bought 165 heads. Now, in order to do that, I need to get an idea of where the restrictions are in this. Now, you can see this is upside down right now. Right? You can see we've got a relatively sharp turn, and this has had quite a bit of work done to it already. Quite a sharp turn to the right, and then at the end it makes a sharp turn to the left. Okay? What happens anytime we turn air? Where does the speed go? Usually like a short side, right? The inside edge is where the air wants to go because it's the shortest distance. So in reality, it's going to do something like this. Okay? It's going to come tight to this side, and on the end, it's going to come tight to that side. And we'll see that on the air speeds. So what I did is I took this port and I sectioned it up. So hopefully we can understand what's going on. Okay, we're going to show you this as well. Okay, it's going to do something, something like that. Our air wants to go tight around this corner. Now, it doesn't look like it's got a, a serious turn here. It looks relatively straight, but there is a, there definitely is a turn here. Okay, and this turn here is obvious, right? What's interesting is the air speeds going through this from the roof to the sides to the floor. Now you have to remember I tested it with clay on the inlet. That way I can get the pitot in and out. Okay, my pitots are quite long, so I can get all the way into the intake port. Now I didn't measure all the way into the intake port. I finished up right about the interface where it goes from the manifold to the cylinder head. Because the cylinder head's easy for me to measure, that's not a problem. What the uh, restrictions seem to be is in this manifold. Now, we, I put the head back on the bench, I tested most I could get out of it uh, today was 277 CFM. So I bolted this on with some clay, I got 260 through the base. Okay, I'm sure I could have done a better job organizing this. You know, someone will crab I wrote the A, B, C, D the wrong way, and then I mix these up. So it's A, B, D, and C. It was a tough week, guys. Okay, one, two, three, four. That's this one, two, three, four. So what I did is I took this port and we divided it this way, right? We're going to take a position and we're going to do one, two, three, four. And these are what we get. 273, 347, right in the middle here. It changes from round to square. Well, it's not completely round, but it's a large radius square, more or less. So what I wound up doing, well, let's just finish going through the speeds first and I'll show you. Okay, so at one we did 273, at two we got 347, at three we got 298, and at the interface we got 351. So what I did is I went down one, two, three, four, and I measured the cross section. Now, because every part of this is a different shape, I had to do the radius, the radius is a little different. These should be pretty close, okay? So I take your square inches, multiply by 146. This is what this section should theoretically maximum, the most you could flow with 28 inches across it. Remember, we don't have 28 inches across it because we have a cylinder head onto this. So it's sharing that 28 inches of depression from the opening all the way through the manifold, through the cylinder head, to the valve, okay? So 
this isn't going to be completely correct, but it gives us an idea. Okay, so one, it's relatively big. We should be able to get 356 through there. We're nowhere close, right? Now, at two, it's, it's almost, a, almost a square at that point, 1.29, 1.57 with a relatively tight corner radius. Okay, that's only 287.5 theoretical CFM. We come down here. Now, remember, I've, I've done a lot of work to these. Okay, I already gave these a lot more area this way. Okay, to make them work better. All right, this one too. This has been this has been changed this way. Okay, something like that. Because we want to take it and straighten that out the best we can. Okay, to add less resistance. Now. The problem with this project is we're trying to keep the air speeds, right? What would be perfect is if we could get everything 300 CFM at 500 lift through the entire intake track. That would be great. It's not going to be possible, but we'd like to get as close to that as we can, and I think it'll deliver great torque for how many cubes it is. Okay, where was I, guys? Sorry. So after this, we go into three, okay? Three, relatively square. That'll flow approximately 311.8 CFM. And our opening, I want to show you guys the opening because there's only one way to really do the opening, right? Okay, the opening looks like it's a 1204, but in reality, it's not. You have to go this way and this way, okay? Because... This manifold is a very low manifold. It intersects the head at a very low angle. Let me see if I can demonstrate that for you. It may not be the easiest thing in the world to see, right? but are you, usually our manifolds are relatively lined up, right? A Victor would have a taper like this, right? A tunnel ram would be curved and go up even higher. A, a low rise or a dual plane is relatively straight in, right? Well, we should say they come in at an angle on the upper H and they come in a little bit more like this on the lower H. Now this manifold is set up more like this. It's way low. Okay, so it intersects at, at, at a very steep angle to the port. So everything will be aimed up at the roof. Okay, now we might be able to get away with doing something with this floor if there is no air there. It'll be, it'll be a challenge for me to, to measure that, though. But I think we could probably do a clay experiment and see what happens. So, what did we learn? It's a mess. All right? Everywhere we go. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Notice all of the twos are high, right? The ones vary from 185 to 300 ones, depending upon where we look, right? The threes, 217 to 353, for 351 to 281. The more difference we have through these runners, the worse they're going to work. So what do we need to do? And part of the question was to get our airspeeds as close as we can, it would make sense that our area would be the same, but you can't do that around turns. In order to get the better flow, we're going to have to give it more area in the turns. Now I'm doing this on my TPI intake, which is going to be different than the one he's going to send me. He's sending me a good aftermarket base. But I'd like to get my R&D done on mine. I'd rather ruin, ruin mine than his. And uh, I definitely need some feedback on this, because this is uh, a little out of my wheelhouse. I've never, done an, I've never done anything quite like this before. But kind of like DV's uh, demonstration of how to get air to turn, right, his his demonstration looked something like this. 
I've drawn it before. Okay, these may not be exactly how he has it in his book, but these are both the same length, and they're supposed to be the same turn. I just did a quick drawing, okay? When you have a turn like this, we're going to lose about 75% of the flow over a straight pipe. This one, when you expand it, okay, you get the air to slow down. You don't lose as much airflow. Now, since it is a TPI, and a lot of this is based on harmonic pulses through a 22-inch intake runner, I still have to sit down and figure out which harmonic it is. I think these are low. I think they're only like uh, second harmonic, whereas like a Victor, I think, is tuned on the fourth harmonic. I haven't really done a lot of work with that type of stuff, so I may be off on that, guys. But that's definitely something we can talk about in the discussion, okay? What do you guys think about me taking this and adding some area and basically doing the same experiment and see if we can get see if we can get these closer, right? Let's see if we can get that up a little more. Now, now it's really not bad. 277 to 260 is not bad. I mean, that's way better than almost all of my dual planes. Maybe maybe that big uh, that big bow time might come close to that. I think that did right around 260, but that's a special manifold. All right, guys. Friday, absolutely cooked. I'm sure you are too. I'm going to go inside, put my little feetsies up, watch something on TV. Uh, i got two electrical jobs to do tomorrow. I'm not really looking forward to that. But, you know, you gotta you got to help people out. All right, guys. Oh, you know what? There's an update on the the Swirlport project. The block has been bought. A set of rods have been bought, but I don't think we'll be able to use them. We'll take a look at them. The rods are actually coming to me. The block is going to my buddy in Mississippi, Clark. And the crank. Actually, I don't know if the block is being shipped yet. I think the crank and rods are only being shipped right now. In any case, making slow, set, steady progress on that as well. I've got tons of work to do on the heads. It's going to take me ages to get them right. But uh, the TPI stuff should be in the mail either uh, tomorrow or the next day, whatever, whatever you can get there. That's Sunday. You probably can't mail it Sunday. <sighs> you know how it is, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.